I just want to let you know that you guys should be charging more for your business to weed out the people that you don't want to work with. I will tell you that I don't want to work with agents who can only afford $100 per month because they're not the clients that I want to work with. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. It's just been a fantastic weekend for me and just getting back into the grind of things. And I realize it's getting dark, so I better do my show here before things wrap up. We had a fun weekend celebrating my daughter's and my birthday. She had a birthday last week, I have a birthday this week, so we combined together and went to Disneyland this weekend. So it was a lot of fun. No sleep, running around in the rain, and uh, just had a blast. So anyway, back to it. I was listening to this podcast and it tied into some other things that are going on in life. And I was like, man, this would be an awesome topic to talk about. So one of the things that happens this time of the year for our our business is that our accountants reach out to us and give them a, I can't remember the term of it, but I think it's called a re-engagement letter. Basically says for the next year, 2020, you're giving us permission to basically do your books, to you know bill you, to do all this kind of stuff and sign on the dotted line and we'll start the invoicing, right? Which is cool. Like I love these guys. Um, I've been using them as accountants now for I think eight years and they're great. They take care of me. They do all of our bookkeeping. They do all of our taxes. They do all of our payroll. Just awesome company. If you need an accountant, let me know and I'll point you in their direction. But what happened was I was listening this podcast and he was talking about services and about the clients that you attract when you charge a certain amount of money. And when we were brand new, we've had little results to instill the prices that we wanted to charge, right? So I was giving away my time basically just to get experience from people. And I think a lot of people are that way when they first start out, they're just willing to do it for free sometimes or for the bare minimum. I know a lot of real estate agents who are willing to take their first listing at like 1% or even less just to get a couple under their belt and keep moving forward. And so this guy in the podcast was talking about how he's decided that he wants to level up his clients. And this was like three years back. And he said, I'm tired of attracting the same crappy clients that I get all the time. And I want to work with bigger businesses that are doing more. So we're going to raise our rates. And he went from something like $4,000 a year to $25,000 a year. And you may think like who in the world would ever go from a $4,000 to a $25,000 cost to work with him. And that was the point. He wanted to weed out all the people that didn't want to work with him. But I was thinking about you guys, like so many of you are charging 1% or half a percent or one and a half percent or 2% or something some ridiculous low number to sell someone's house. And obviously if you're representing the buyer, you get paid basically whatever the listing agents agree to. You really, at least in California, maybe there's other states that change this, but it is time to say it's 2020. We are doubling our rates and it's time to go to a three at least or a four percent listing fee. I just want to let you know that you guys should be charging more for your business to weed out the people that you don't want to work with. I will tell you that I don't want to work with a agents who can only afford hundred dollars per month because they're not the clients that I want to work with. They're not willing to take the action and put the risk out there and do the required steps to get the business that they want. I want the agents who are willing to spend $997 per month with us so that they can build a funnel and they can attract the clients they want to and they can get off the phones as much as they've been on the phone and they can stop door knocking as much as they've door they can actually do the things in their business that they need to do to have the business they want and sell the homes that they want to do. Guys, what's going on? I'm just on my way over to get my hair cut and thought I'd talk to you for a bit. It's been a busy day at our house. We've been bulldozing out the backyard. Finally got our foundation guys to start. The rain stopped, so exciting stuff. It's fun. My little girls are like pressed up against the back window watching all these tractors digging around and a lot of fun for them. So anyway, busy day. I was listening to this podcast. He was talking about goals, right? So it's the end of the year. We've got like 20 days left of the year. And he was talking about like, what are you gonna get done in 2020? And we've been talking about goals a lot around here and really setting yourself up for an awesome year next year. I think a lot of us wait till the 31st to set our goals. And then by the 5th of January, most of them are gone. So hopefully you guys have a better plan than that and actually have steps put in place to accomplish your New Year's resolutions. One of the things that I try to do is think about my 10 year goals, my five year goals, my three year goals, my one year goal. And, and then I break it down the steps that I need to take each month, well, each quarter, each month, each week, 
all the way down each day so that I know exactly what I need to do to have the results that I'm looking for. So one of the things I want to talk to you about is the timeline that you put on these goals, because I think some people are just like, you know, hey, I want to make a million dollars in my life or I want to make a billion dollars or whatever that number is. Right. And they don't have an expect or an expiration on that goal. They just say, I want to do it. And without an actual date on that goal, you're never going to accomplish what you're trying to achieve. And so the point of this video is to number one, what's the definition of my goal? Like, do I want to sell 50 houses this year? Do I want to make a million dollars this year? Whatever that goal is. And then number two is when do we want to accomplish a buy? Just by saying this year is pretty good, but you need to have expectations, right? There's usually well, there's four quarters to a year. If you want to sell 50 houses, it's basically 12 ish per quarter. If you sold 12 homes per quarter, I guarantee you will fall short of your goals because something's going to happen in the last quarter and you may not make it and you may end up failing at 40, which is still awesome. Maybe it's way better than where you were this year. But if you don't have definitive goals all the way along, then you're going to fall short. So figure out your big goal for the year. Maybe it's the decade you're working on, but figure out your big goal for the year. Figure out the quarterly results that you need to get to. Uh, right off the bat, we have to have definitive goals. And so for you guys, as you're planning out your year, figure out how many houses you're going to sell this year, figure out how many homes you need to sell each quarter, what that looks like, and then reverse engineer, right? We talk about reverse engineering around here a lot. If I need to sell, let's just say 10 homes in the first quarter, how many people do I need to be in front of? How many leads do I need to be acquiring? How many emails do I need to be sending out every single week? How many open houses do I need to have? How many whatever's, right? Do I need to bring on a new buyer's agent to make this happen? Whatever those numbers are, you need to figure out what that is. You probably already know enough about your own numbers to figure out how many of each thing you need to get. But the point is to know your numbers, figure out what results you have to achieve, and then the actual action items that you need to take to get to your goals. So that's my plea as we wrap up December here in the next 20 days. Don't just set New Year's resolutions, but actually reverse engineer the perfect year for 2020. I'm so excited for 2020. Like I just see like the 2020 in my eyes, like perfect vision. I have a clear image of what uh, this next decade is going to look like for me. And I know that things are going to change drastically because if I rewind a decade, decade ago to 2009, I am in a completely, completely different place than I ever thought I would ever be a decade ago. So, which is good. Like uh, some things I've fall short on, some things I've blown out of the water. I've achieved things that I never even dreamt were possible 10 years ago. So that's great. Uh, and I think the same goes for you too. So plan out an awesome decade, plan out 2020 to be awesome. Um, I feel like I'm saying awesome a lot, but anyway, make it great. And, uh, and share if you wouldn't mind. So you're probably listening to this in the podcast. Maybe you're watching this post in Facebook or in one of our vlogs or wherever this turns out to be. Mention in the comments. Let me know what your goals are big time, like what your year goal is. And then tell me the action items that you're going to take on a daily basis to get there. So for example, if you want to sell hundred homes this year, I'm just throwing out numbers. How many people do you need to contact today, right? How many new subscribers to your email campaign do you need to get? How many emails are you planning on sending out every single week? How many Facebook ads are you planning on running every single week? Tell me some of the numbers that you're thinking about after you reverse engineer your perfect 2020. So excited to hear about it. And uh, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe and share this with somebody who needs to hear it in your business. It could be a partner. It could be somebody across the country that you met at a networking event. It could be somebody else, whoever it is, somebody in real estate needs to hear this. Please subscribe. Come back for more. Thanks guys for joining us every single week and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye guys.